Today we check out a mechanical keyboard from Tesoro, which I think has had some misrepresentation in some reviews I've seen, so I want to have a deeper look at the Tesoro Excalibur SE Spectrum Optical Keyboard, and it is nice to see some innovation. The box is typical of Tesoro, which is very retail friendly, showing all the features that we'll of course check out, the main one being the optical key switches. Opening it up, we have the user manual, a sticker with all the shortcuts, you can stick this on the bottom of the keyboard or wherever you want, and finally the keyboard itself. So here it is, this is a full sized keyboard with 104 keys, so we have the numpad and all. The design is a mixed bag, the shape of the case is very traditional with a slightly rounded rectangular shape. I personally like the simple and clean shape, however, others might find it a bit boring. This does only come in this black version as of now, which keeps it very conventional. Above the arrow keys, for whatever reason, has break the rules written there. Honestly, don't know what the thinking behind that is. It's not the logo and it just looks tacky, but also sounds pretty tacky. The Tesoro logo is at the top right, which is pretty standard fare. While it is large, I don't mind it. It does light up though and is RGB, so it can change color with the key LEDs. The typeface on the keycaps is the classic gamery font. It is a gaming keyboard, so as always, it does fit the theme, but I still don't like it as many others agree with, especially those really aggressive arrow keys. Under the keycaps, we have the steel backplate, which is in white to reflect the LED lighting more. So it has all the aesthetic elements of a gaming keyboard, but fitted into a very traditional enclosure. The keyboard has a slight inclination to it without the feet up. On the bottom we have four flat rubber feet for non-slip and two flip up feet which are also rubber tipped. We also have some drainage holes towards the bottom of the case and this is because Tesoro claimed that the keyboard is water resistant, however there is no IP rating given. Alright, so for sure the main attraction and reason to buy this keyboard are the optical key switches. And firstly, I must commend Tesoro on their desire to push forward with different innovations and technologies as previously seen on their Gram Spectrum with their Agile key switches. And this is their way of differentiating themselves from the overly saturated market. Anyway, these have been made together with Gatoron interestingly, who make great key switches and I definitely recommend them. However, these still do say Tesoro rather than Gatoron on the clear top casings. To know the difference, we first have to know how a traditional mechanical key switch works. Basically, we press down the key and the slider goes down to move the leaf. And when these two middle contacts meet, that is an actuation. With the optical switches, much of the build is the same. We still have our stem and the spring. The top casing is the same, but we have the bulge for the LED for better lighting on this one. In the bottom housing, we have the click leaf but we don't have the other contact plate. This is because it uses an infrared laser, which is on the PCB itself. So here we have these two points, and basically if we block the path between those two points, therefore blocking the infrared light, it will register a key press. What blocks the beam is the long protrusion on the slider, which slides down the bottom housing, which now has an open prong, rather than completely closed like on a normal housing. This allows for very accurate and precise actuations. They state that it is slightly faster, but the difference is so minuscule that, I mean, I of course can't notice it and I'll be surprised if anyone could in real time. Another thing is that since there is no metal to metal contact, there will be no wear or oxidation, even though Cherry MX switches do have gold plated cross contact points, which are very resistant to oxidation. And this brings the keystroke lifespan up to 100 million actuations. Since there is no pins on the switch, the switch doesn't need to be soldered to the PCB because all it's doing is blocking the infrared signal. So it's super easy to just unclip and remove the key switches, which is a feature of the keyboard. However, they do not provide a key switch puller, which is a bit odd. However, it's really easy with just a flathead screwdriver or tweezers to take them out. Consequently, you can't use any old key switch since the bottom housing prong is completely solid and therefore would stay permanently actuated. Another important point is that while these are similar, these are very different to what we call analog key switches as found on the Wooting 1 
with the flare tech switches. Those ones can sense how far a key has been pushed and can act accordingly rather than just open and closed. These have a dark navy blue coloured stem and mimic the Cherry MX Blues, so they're clicky, tactile and loud. These however feel lighter than MX Blues and are much like Gatoron Blues if not the same feeling, which is to be expected. And here's a quick sound test. The keycaps used are double shot ABS keycaps, meaning that the legends are a different mold of plastic, so they never fade away, and these are the typical 1mm thin caps. Now to the lighting, this is all controlled by the function key at the bottom. First of all the brightness is controlled with the up and down arrow keys. We can cycle through various lighting effect modes with the left and right arrow keys. We can change colours by pressing function and the menu key right next to it. And this only has 7 colours, which unfortunately doesn't harness the capabilities of the RGB lighting. It does have the main colours of course, and you'll probably be able to match it to your setup, but yeah. And the white is pretty blue, which is very common on RGB boards. We can create our own lighting profile with function and page up, and press the keys to your liking, again being limited to the 7 colours. We can also create our own dynamic lighting sequence with function and page down, which is actually pretty fun and kind of funny. Not sure where it could be applicable, but you can make it do whatever by holding down keys or just pressing them, and that just keeps looping. This keyboard is also capable of macro recording. To do this, we press function and home, and the gaming LED will start flashing. From F1 to F4, we have our macro keys, so we pick one of those to store it on. Then we can have a sequence of up to 20 keys, and to save that we press function and home again, and now when I press F1 it does exactly that. All of this is stored on the 512 kilobytes of onboard memory, so there is no software to tweak things, meaning that it's plug and play wherever you go. From F5 to F8 we have our repeat speeds, next to that are some media controls, F12 locks the whole keyboard, we can switch between 6 key rollover and N key rollover with insert and delete. And finally to reset the whole keyboard we hold B and L and plug the keyboard in. Opening up the keyboard is pretty simple with just a couple of Phillips head screws on the bottom and then you just pry it apart. The top shell is surprisingly flimsy, usually there's a bit more rigidity and less flex but it's not noticeable when it's all put together with a steel plate. The bottom plastic piece is pretty much just a flat lid to close everything off, so there's no ribbing or reinforcement and stuff. This does feature a white steel plate, which we can tell is steel because it's magnetic. It's 1.5mm thick, which is the norm, and is folded over on all sides, which gives it that real rigidity and sturdiness, and also gives it that typical mechanical keyboard heft we expect. Here's the PCB, and it's definitely very different from most of the other PCBs we check out on here. The backside is nearly empty because everything is on the other side since there's no through hole switches or components. Also the header for the cable is hot glued in, but the wires themselves are loosely fitted, and one of the black wires actually was dislodged at some time during the disassembly. And there are two black ones, so I marked one with silver, and then I hot glued all of that so it would be secure. Honestly, it's pretty poor. It would take a good amount of movement to dislodge the cables when it's all put together, but still cables shouldn't come out that easily. Overall, it's an interesting package. It's packing a lot of features with the optical switches, lighting, macro capability, and all the secondary functions, so really it's pretty much just the design I have an issue with. And as always, that's subjective. I really do wish there was a 10 keyless option of this. They're definitely going for the PC gaming market here, 
so it would have made sense to have an option to go without it. It saves a heap of space giving you more room for mouse movements and also I just think it would improve the aesthetics of the keyboard. The main attraction is of course the optical switches made with Gatoron and this is something I admire with Tesoro as said before. They're just giving more options with different switches. Their Gram Spectrum that I checked out a while ago uses the Agile key switches from Kale which are shorter switches. I like their push to use different innovations and technologies on their products, however while they give us options with switches and designs, I feel like there's a severe lack of 10 keyless options in their lineup, which hopefully they can address in the future. They will soon be releasing the Gram SE Spectrum with the optical switches, as well as the option for the linear switch. Tesoro have been generous enough to give us another one to give away at the upcoming Sydney Mechanical Keyboard Meetup in July which we are very grateful for and will be having many more prizes so if you're in the area do come along and details are in the description.